Hello and welcome to the Southwest Alaska Salmon Habitat Partnership. I'm Tim Troll, the Partnership Coordinator. I'm also the Executive Director of the Bristol Bay Heritage Land Trust, the fiscal agent for our partnership. Our partnership actually predates the National Fish Habitat Initiative. We were formed back in 2000, called ourselves the Southwest Alaska Conservation Coalition. Back in those days, our primary mission was to raise funds to acquire conservation protections on private lands that were in holdings within federal and state conservation units. Our signature accomplishment was the acquisition of a 21,000 acre conservation easement along the Agulawak River in Alaska's Wood Tikchik State Park. The Agulawak is an important salmon migrating corridor and Wood Tikchik State Park is the largest state park in the nation. In 2008, our coalition petitioned the National Fish Habitat Board for recognition under the relatively new National Fish Habitat Initiative. That recognition was granted and we became the Southwest Alaska Salmon Habitat Partnership. We took salmon in our name because salmon is what we are all about in Southwest Alaska. Wild salmon have supported Alaska native subsistence fisheries that have been around for about 10,000 years. A commercial fishing industry that's been around for 137 years. And a recreational fishing and lodge industry that's been around since 1950. The service area for our partnership was the same as that for our coalition. It encompassed the Bristol Bay region of uh, southwest Alaska and the Cusiquim River up to the Antioch tributary. The Antioch is the northernmost range for rainbow trout. In our strategic action plan, we defined our mission to protect, conserve, and if necessary, restore watersheds that sustain wild salmon populations and the fisheries of southwest Alaska. Unlike many of the other partnerships, the region we serve is pristine. Little habitat needs restoration. Our focal species is sockeye salmon. Our focal areas are the least protected Huck 3 watersheds in the region. The major threats identified are climate change, large-scale open pit mining, and land ownership fragmentation that leads to habitat fragmentation. Our overall goal is to maintain the complex fish habitat portfolio of Southwest Alaska. In this map, we see the Huck 3 watersheds of Southwest Alaska apportioned by how much area is permanently protected and how much is unprotected. We can see that the Nushigak and Quechek River watersheds are the least protected. Ironically, these are the most important for the fisheries of Southwest Alaska. As the pie chart at the lower right shows, these two watersheds account for nearly 25% of the world's sockeye salmon population. How do we protect salmon habitat in an area almost as large as the state of Washington? We came up with seven strategic actions that, if implemented, we think will go a long way to getting us there. In the last 12 years, Partners have been able to raise about $3.9 million to match roughly $2.2 million in project and operational funding that we received through the National Fish Habitat Initiative. Partners were also successful in raising about another $15 million to advance partnership strategies. I'd like to take a moment and focus on four of those strategies. Since recognition, our partnership has funded in-stream flow reservations. These are reservations of water for fish granted under Alaska's unique water law that allows private persons and organizations to apply for and obtain water level protection in streams and in lakes for fish. We have helped partners pay for the hydrologic data collection necessary to file reservations that now cover 430 river miles in southwest Alaska. The partnership has funded fish distribution surveys and added roughly 1,351 miles to Alaska's anadromous waters catalog. 
A river, stream, or lake entered in the catalog receives a higher degree of permit protection from the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. Our efforts were focused on streams within the Nushigak and Quechak River watersheds. We found fish in 98% of the sites sampled and salmon in 70%. From the work of our partners, we have been able to model the likely presence of salmon in streams that have not been sampled. And we can confidently identify to the Huck 6 level the drainages within the larger watershed that support salmon or that are most likely to support salmon. The scientific work conducted by our partners has helped us identify critical areas for conservation. As a result, partners have been able to raise money to secure conservation protections on thousands of acres, both within and outside of conservation units. Our most recent project was the completion of a 13,900 acre conservation easement in Lake Iliamna, Alaska's largest lake. The easement protects a unique genetic group of island beach spawning sockeye salmon and haulouts for the only freshwater seal population in the United States and one of only five in the world. Partnership funds are not used to purchase property but are used for incidental costs like appraisals, document preparation, and closing costs. Finally, our strategy for outreach and education. The partnership recognizes that we need to maintain and develop a local, statewide, national, and even international constituency for conserving salmon habitat in southwest Alaska. Our signature education program is the Bristol Bay Fly Fishing and Guide Academy that we started in 2008. It has been generously supported over the years by Trout Unlimited, Bristol Bay Native Corporation, Orvis, many different lodges in Bristol Bay and federal agencies like the Fish and Wildlife Service, the Bureau of Land Management, and most recently, NOAA. Here's a short promotional film that we did in 2013 that describes the program. Well, the River Academy uh, was started by myself and uh, the traditional chief of Ekwok, a fellow by the name of Luki Aklakak. And uh, I looked at it as an opportunity to train locals uh, to basically work in lodges where the, our message for conservation can get out to large, uh, a larger audience. Trout Unlimited, um, the local land trust, and the Native Corporation have kind of come together to create a, a training program for local youth where we teach them what it's like to be a guide, how to fly fish, uh, and we have conversations about the different values of salmon. Once we put a fly rod in their hand and showed them how to tie a fly and they went down and caught a silver, they were hooked. We have discussions with the, the kids on everything from river ecology and bugs in the water and what trout eat uh, to land use and land management issues uh, all up and down the, the watershed. And at the end of the camp, uh, the kids are, they've got their foot in the door for getting a job at a lodge. One of the important things to remember here is whether these kids wind up being fly fishermen or not, many of them are going to wind up being leaders in their villages. So it's important not so much that the kids know how to fly fish, but to know what it's about and to understand that, uh, that, that there is a common ground that you share. And so the common ground is conservation. And if I have future village leaders who understand that, and I have lodges who understand that, uh, then I think conservation has a much better chance in the region.
world is yours if you want it.